Kiara in the headlines, the Law Commission is taking a hard line against cyberbullying. It has just released a report on harmful digital communications after growing concern from police, coroners and teachers spurred the Justice Minister to ask the Commission to fast-track its work in this area. Recommendations include a communications tribunal, school-based anti-bullying programs and making cyberbullying a criminal offence. However, Professor John Burroughs QC cautions that should be a last resort. Digital communications can get a much wider audience, spread very quickly, it can also last a very long time. Uh, sometimes they're anonymous too, which adds, I think, in some cases to a sense of threat. We'd see the criminal offence we've talked about as being pretty much the end of the line, hopefully not used very much, and particularly in the case of young people. But the, the mere fact is there serves as a deterrent. The Department of Conservation is being prosecuted for the death of a Romanian volunteer. The Labor Department has charged Doc for failing to ensure the safety of Mihai Mankasnagi, who died on Raul Island in January while taking water temperature readings. Doc has not entered a plea. Opposition parties are furious that the Social Development Minister hasn't accepted her error in releasing private income details about a beneficiary. The Office of Human Rights Proceedings says a breach did occur and Labour's David Shearer wants Paula Bennett to apologise. She hasn't bothered even to say sorry. She's accessed people's private information to bully that person for her own political gain. That's wrong. North Islanders are being reassured about the smell of rotten eggs. Following last week's Mount Tongariro eruption, alarmed residents as far away as Wellington have reported smelling sulphur. But Brad Scott from GNS Science says that's part of the natural process. Coca-Cola 11 a you see those little gas bubbles still rising up through the bottle for a few minutes afterwards. And that's called degassing, and that's the process that's happening in the magma. Honganui residents are meeting to discuss concerns about the man called the Beast of Blenheim being placed in their community. Justice Minister Judith Collins said she can't interfere in this instance, but hopes to implement civil detention orders that will prevent criminals like Stuart Wilson being released. They have to be released somewhere. It's not for me to question the parole board's decisions. Uh, civil detention orders would put in place some even better protections. Tobacco giants are refusing to admit defeat. The Australian High Court has ruled the government can insist on plain packaging for cigarettes and has ordered tobacco companies to pay the government's legal costs. But Philip Morris and British American tobacco representatives insist that questions about legality haven't been completely settled. Belarusian drug cheat Nazi Ostapchuk says she was framed by a former coach who extorted money from athletes and was arrested by the KGB in May. Minister Murray McCulley is dismissing the disgraced shot putter's extravagant claims. Very happy for the IOC process to take its natural course. It seems to be perfectly satisfactory. Uh, New Zealand is very involved in the World Anti-Doping Agency, so it's very important to see the proper standards adhered to. Overseas, 46 people have been killed in a series of suicide bomb attacks in Afghanistan, making it the highest civilian death toll there this year. Policemen are among those killed. Most of the attacks happened in the southwestern Afghanistan area near the Iranian border. And as violence escalates in Syria, there are growing concerns that Islamist fighters, including foreigners linked to terror groups like Al-Qaeda, are joining up with the Free Syria Army. Experts have told VOA there's ample online and video evidence that the Syrian uprising is being exploited by jihadists.